With so much choice out there and so much technical jargon, it's almost damn near impossible to choose the right waterproof gear. So in this video, I'm going to explain everything. Let's go. Hello fellow hiker and long-term world traveler, Russ here bringing you the best tips and inspiration for hiking around the world. Okay, so I've been doing an absolute ton of research on waterproof gear and it's really confusing when it comes to choosing the right gear for you. Questions like how waterproof is a jacket? How can I even tell how waterproof something even is? What are the tests that this waterproof gear goes through? And what is a waterproof test even called? And what level of waterproofing do I need for my adventures? These are all questions that spring to mind. So let's go over this. I mean, it's a really interesting topic and uh, it's actually quite simple. So how waterproof is a piece of gear? So when you go to a website to purchase your new item of waterproof gear, you're usually presented with something that looks like this from Patagonia's website or something that looks like this from Zpax's website. But what on earth do those big numbers mean? I mean, what is 20,000 millimeters actually standing for? Is it 20,000 millimeters of rain before this stuff stops being waterproof? Or is it 20,000 meters below the surface of water that it can put up with? What is it? Well, I'm going to explain to you right now. We work out exactly how waterproof something is by doing what's called a hydrostatic head test. In the traditional test, the waterproof fabric is stretched over a one inch in diameter tube and sealed tight. The tube is then filled with water until water starts to penetrate the fabric at the end. The height of the water in the one inch diameter tube is then recorded in millimeters as soon as the water starts to get through. That reading is called the hydrostatic head of the fabric. That reading is the limit of which the fabric can hold the water back. In the modern test, people seem to have just done away with the incredibly long tube and what they do now is they fit the fabric over a cylinder which is then pumped with water and the pump pressure of the water simulates the depth of water in that one inch diameter tube. Still in the modern test, when water starts starts to seep through the fabric, the test is stopped and the pressure reading is recorded and that is what becomes the hydrostatic head from that test for that fabric. So when a fabric like the ones that I showed you earlier on those websites has a hydrostatic head rating of 20,000 millimeters, it basically means you're going to need a 20 meter long one inch diameter tube to be filled with water in order to get through that fabric. And that is a lot of water and that is incredibly waterproof. The highest waterproof rating that any fabric can get or the highest hydrostatic head that any fabric can get is more than 20,000 millimeters. You'll always see it written as more than 20,000 millimeters because that is considered the most waterproof that a fabric can get. And anything above that, I don't think they even bother uh, taking the reading. I think it's more common to use this this modern test now because it's much more convenient and much less space is taken up by using a 20,000 millimeter long tube. So that's how fabrics are tested. Now, how on earth does this relate to hiking out in the rain? Surely it's not exactly the same test. I mean, we don't all walk around with 20 meter tall tubes coming at us filled with water. It just doesn't work like that out in the field. Okay, so this is an incredibly fair test to do because most of the fabrics that we use for our backpacking gear are so high tech these days that it needs to be conducted with an incredibly fair test. We have to use incredibly controlled conditions in order to find the fabric's exact breaking point in which it will become permeable to water. And also don't forget, this is all to do with water pressure and forces. So when it comes to choosing the right waterproof gear, the hydrostatic head reading is incredibly important. The higher number the more water pressure the fabric can actually take before water starts to seep through and the lower the number the less pressure it can actually take before it starts to come through. So the big question how does this relate to rain? So rain actually falls at different speeds, different rates, different angles, uh, different sizes of raindrops, there's so many variables. So when we think about this and pressure, hydrostatic head becomes very important because the more pressure it can take, the drier it's going to keep you in a heavier downpour. The lower the hydrostatic head rating, the gentler the rain that it will actually be able to put up with. Also, we're wearing and sleeping on these materials, so that's also important when considering pressure and waterproof capabilities. So for instance, if you're wearing a backpack and it starts to rain, the part of your your back where the backpack is starting to make most contact is actually going to generate more pressure against your back and the water in between you and the backpack. Also if you're sleeping in a tent and the ground sheet has a much lower hydrostatic head rating then the less pressure it's going to be able to take and the more likely it is that the water is going to start seeping through. The UK bylaw requires all gear that's said to be waterproof to have a hydrostatic head rating of a thousand millimeters or one meter at the time of sale before they can even call it waterproof. 
That for the record is actually barely anything. It's probably okay for a walk to the shops, but for hiking gear, and if you're gonna be expected to be walking in some really heavy rain, then you'll need something of at least 5,000 millimeters. That should be able to withstand your average rainfall that we get here in the UK pretty much all the time. And usually the most expensive gear is more than 20,000 millimeters. So if 5,000 millimeters is enough, then why should you spend more money just to get that higher rating? The answer is very simple. The hydrostatic head rating that your gear that you you bought today isn't going to have the exact same rating six months down the line after a few hundred miles of hiking. The gear that you buy will definitely have that rating brand new, but as soon as it's worn and as soon as you've taken it out hiking, that rating will start to deplete. And the waterproof jacket that you bought and that you love won't have the same rating a few months down the line. In short, the higher the hydrostatic head rating of the gear that you buy in the shop when you first got it, the longer it's going to keep waterproof for and the less you're going to need to switch them out. The lower the hydrostatic head rating, the sooner you're going to be starting to notice that rain is starting to get through your jacket, your tent's starting to get wet on the inside, you're gonna need some kind of like pack liner for your waterproof backpack. So it's a really important thing to consider, all of the facts are there. I've done so much research on this. Hydrostatic head, it's a very important yet very simple concept. Okay, campfire question, what waterproof rating does your gear have? Uh, let us know in the comment section below, we'd really love to know, and let us know how you've got on with it, how long has it lasted, is it waterproof still, how long have you had it, we'd really love to hear from you. Okay, thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you found it useful, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll see you in the next one.